Thanks to uh, Pru and GTFCC for inviting us to speak here today. Um, I'm speaking on behalf of a large team from Johns Hopkins University about the GTFCC cholera database that we presented on last year. So um, this is a, a, large, a large project we've been working on for a number of years to collect cholera incidence data and other types of data as a centralized repository that we can use um, for monitoring progress towards the roadmap goals. Um, next, please. So in thinking about how we want to monitor progress, um, there are a lot of different important activities that we need to take into consideration. So for one, we need to think about mapping the geographic burden of disease, um, being able to monitor key GTFCC indicators and hotspots over time so that we can um, see how countries are progressing towards uh, their NCPs, as well as being able to track information on risk factors like water and sanitation, as well as uh, where vaccine has been deployed. So on the right, we have uh, an example of some preliminary estimates of some mapping work we've uh, done in Tanzania, but also across Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, next, please. So the, the database that we've been compiling has data that comes from many different sizes and many organizations that are on this call have uh, been contributing to this database for a number of years. The UNICEF uh, cholera platforms, WHO, um, we, we take data from many ministries of health and, and input it into our database. Um, as well as some public sources like ProMed and some of the reports that are put out by, um, for instance, WHO Afro. So um, the idea is to be able to bring together many different types of data that come in different forms, uh, figures, tables, uh, text, and be able to put it into a place that has standardized data formats. Uh, next. And the primary way that we are sort of organizing this database is through uh, linking, the, linking observations of cholera incidents, suspected cases, confirmed cases, and deaths to uh, specific locations over specific time periods. So through that organ organizing principle, we can uh, bring in together lots of different types of information into a single place. Next. So the role of the database that we envision, and this is sort of the current status as well as moving forward a bit, but is to bring together both incidence data, serological and molecular data, some, uh, a feature that's not quite yet implemented, um, risk factors like water and sanitation estimates, as well as indicators that are useful for GTSCC. So for instance, progress on um, the NCP, as well as other activities like vaccination campaigns, bring all of this information together into a single centralized repository. Next. And the, uh, the database itself can also be host for various analytics, um, which could include, and, and which do include at this moment, um, dashboards that can display and visualize some of this information. Um, maps of geographic burden of disease, uh, potentially projections into the future, as well as um, the impact of various control measures. So the idea is really to have this central repository where we can um, view a sort of summary picture of cholera as, as we know the current epidemiology and status in various countries. Next. So in the future, um, I mean, this is some, a project we've been working on for a number of years, but what we envision is that there are sort of four different roles that we could um, see of people using and accessing the database. So on our end, we've been working a lot on data entry as well as um, thinking a little bit about some visualizations and data analysis that can be incorporated into the database. Uh, but we also envision in the future 
uh, more global actors and ministries of health, people that have been that that are using this data or that would like to use this data, as well as um, that have been contributing the data in the past to access the data through something similar to what I'll be presenting on today, which are country profiles. And these are sort of summaries of the current epidemiology and current status of the data in the database for a given location. And this is something that we can, um, you know, is, is currently under development. So this would be a preliminary look, but uh, something that we're looking to develop in conjunction with GTSCC members and countries as we continue developing it and moving forward. Uh, next. So uh, I wanted to show two videos that are um, giving you a sense of what the current status and progress of our database has been. Um, this first one is showing a bit of the back end. So what we at Johns Hopkins have been using to enter data and what, what views that we see when trying to summarize and look for different data sets. Um, if you see this page, um, this is sort of a, a web browser version that we have. And uh, the first view that you see here is a summary of observation collections, essentially individual data sets. Um, if you could start the video. So uh, we have, if you can, I don't know if, if everyone can see the table, but uh, this is a summary of the different locations and um, observation time periods that we have for different countries. Um, and this landing page view uh, is something that can be filtered and sorted by different features. So right now it's sorted sort of by the most recent observations that we've been entering into the database, but it can also, seems like the video may be paused. Um, may need to click again. Is it? Is it advancing? I don't think um, it does. Okay, well, I can talk through what, what it's showing. Um, so right now it's sorted by recent observation collections, but it can also um, be sorted by observation counts. And so, um, you know, filtering by different countries as well. So here we're looking uh, for observation collections we have for Nigeria. If you click on one of these individual um, links in the table, you get brought to a page where there's an individual data set being shown. So you can see there's a map of what uh, coverage of the data has. We have some summarizing information on uh, where we got the data from, who entered it, uh, links to the specific document that was used to extract the data, um, different definitions of suspected in cholera uh, case definitions, as well as a summary of um, you know, the number of cases and deaths that are observed in this table. And when you scroll down, you can see uh, the individual observations themselves, uh, which show the location that's associated as well as the time period that's associated with any given observation. Um, you can also download this data set as well as uh, you know, take a look at other, other locations that are lo located in that um, data set. And we have a view that shows an overall summary of the data that's included in the database. So right now we have over 2000 individual data sources and almost 3 million individual observations from countries around the world. Uh, if you could go to the next slide. Um, so this is another important feature that we've been, de de been developing, which is a little bit more focused on um, what we envision global and country level GTFCC users uh, to uh, to use in the future. Um, so this is a first look at something we've been, been developing um, with Ethiopia's, uh, you know, as they've been going through their NCP planning. Um, and the idea is that it shows a summary of um, current status of the data and epidemiology that we have about the country. So this page here 
is um, at the top showing some figures of summary information that we have. Um, the, the middle part is uh, more GTFCC indicators, so the status and progress of, of um, NCP development information on previous vaccination campaigns, and then more metadata summary data at the bottom. So if you could start the video. Um, we have two views. So one is the maps view. Um, we have previous estimates of uh, suspected cholera incidents uh, rates, the mean annual incidents from 2010 to 2016, as well as the cases, something that we've published um, previously uh, in 2018. And then we also have integrated uh, water access and sanitation access. So these are estimates that were developed by the Institute for Health Metrics and Evaluation who've presented at some of the WASH working group meetings. And we have a number of figures. So this one here you may recognize as the hotspot indicators tool, uh, mean annual incidence versus persistence, uh, as well as annual summary cases. So pulling from data in the database, a summary of, of what it looks like and estimates of seasonality, which we've modeled within our own team, as well as um, the hotspot analysis uh, figure that we had worked on with the Ethiopian Public Health Institute. And this is a demonstration of the separate view. So you can sort of compare multiple figures and maps side by side in the event that there are, you know, we'll be adding new figures and updated figures over time. So being able to compare how changes over time have occurred. Um, and then here we have a, a list of, of tasks that you can see that are th through the inception and development of the National Cholera Control Plan for tracking purposes. Um, we also envision developing the vaccination campaign table in the future where we, we can um, have more detailed tracking of doses that have been delivered. Um, and this here is showing some of the metadata related to the most recent observations that have been entered into the database. Um, and you, know, you can access some of them directly. So similar to the view that we saw before, um, you can go directly to specific data sets that are supporting this country profile. Uh, as, and at the, uh, so there are a number of different uh, observation collections that we have for Ethiopia. And then at the bottom, uh, we have a place where you can store documents so that um, you, know, you could envision storing the NCP there, for instance. And we also developed or are thinking of developing a, an automated report that somebody could download based on all of the information that's on the profile that you could um, share with colleagues. So, that's a, a brief overview of, of the country profile work that we've been developing. It's, it's definitely something we're planning to build out in the future and uh, include many different maps and figures as they, as they become available. Next, please. So some of the key database features that I wanted to highlight is that this is um, a centralized repository for cholera surveillance data of all different kinds. Um, I know I mentioned the serological and molecular data is something we're hoping to incorporate into the future, perhaps by linking to pub, um, public repositories. And because the centralizing principle is through um, locate, you know, linking data to locations and periods, we can support many different kinds of data. So incidents, deaths, hotspots that are identified from situational analysis, documents, um, OCV use, as well as zero incidence data. And the idea for some of the, um, uh, the idea is to host both raw data as well as visualizations of modeled output. And uh, to be able to, develop country and potentially regional profiles that summarize key cholera data and risk factors. Next. And moving forward, um, we 
are hoping that this will be used to, so we, we're hoping to streamline the management and entry of cholera incidence data um, that are reported to the Secretariat. Uh, we're hoping to generate country profiles for all cholera affected countries for which we have data and that are contributing to the database, um, as well as potentially expand the country level profiles that I've shown to wider regions. Uh, we're also hoping, so some, some of you may remember work that we've done in the past um, pr producing cholera incidence burden maps. We're hoping to include those in the database as well as regular updates to them. Um, as well as linking other, other data sources that I've mentioned before. And um, this work has been supported by both GTFCC and the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation. So we're hoping that um, this will be a, a useful resource for GTFCC members in the future. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Lee, uh, Elizabeth Lee. Um, well, that was a summary of the cholera database and how it can be used. And in particularly looking at the development of country profiles uh, for future use. 